are so many reasons why Weill Cornell is a great place to do research. One reason is the number of high quality investigators here at Weill Cornell, but also right here in this corner of the, of the Upper East Side of Manhattan. This is one of the highest concentrations of biomedical researchers in the country here on the corner of 68th Street and York Avenue. So the number of researchers that are right here, the huge number of postdoctoral scientists, graduate students, core facilities, it's, it's really impressive. So we're very integrated here um, at Weill Cornell with our neighboring institutions and it creates this sort of mega institution which uh, is very synergistic for getting research done. The overall goal of the laboratory is to understand the molecular basis for uh, developmental disorders in children, in particular neurodevelopmental disorders, autism, mental retardation, and epilepsy. And uh, the way we try to understand these disorders is by trying to reconstitute many of the uh, molecular changes. And so by being able to reconstitute those changes, we can then start to explore how can we correct them. You know, what therapies could be used, what small molecule therapies, what genetic therapies could be used to get the connections to form again. And so that's the overall goal of the laboratory is to understand why do neurodevelopmental disorders occur and come up with strategies that could help to reverse it. There are different ways that stem cell work can be done. You know, in some cases, stem cell work is done from embryos, but in some cases, we can now take skin cells from children with autism and revert those skin cells back to a stem cell-like state and then convert those to neurons. And the reason why that's important is because there are so many types of autism and mental retardation where we don't know the genetic cause. And it would be much better to go right to the child, take a little bit of a skin scraping, and make neurons that are similar to what are in the child's brain just from their skin and see how those neurons behave. So the stem cells that come from skin are not the controversial one that you hear in the news. Those are sort of a very appealing strategy to be able to get cells from a regular person and then differentiate them into neurons. Our research as often does takes different turns, unexpected turns, and so, for instance, one of the things that we've been, uh, uh, you know, when we've been exploring in children uh, how these connections form, we've been finding that some of the strategies that we can use to correct those uh, abnormalities could also work in adults who have spinal cord injury. After an injury, you basically have a cut in the spinal cord, and the axons that go from the from the cortex all the way down the spinal cord are cut. And at that level where the spinal cord is cut, no uh, muscle activity is observed below that level. And so how do you get those axons to regrow? And it turns out that some of the principles that we found in these uh, in, in, in neonatal neurons also applies to getting the spinal cord to regrow. In adults, your brain, your neuronal cells don't grow. So by taking some molecules that are normally found during development and placing them in the adult neuron, you can get them to grow again, just like they should be growing in children. But those, those processes are turned off in adults. And so that's kind of the actual goal. We take natural proteins, but proteins that just aren't normally there at this, at this time in adults. And so that's really what we want to do. We want to recapitulate the features of development after injury. So, you know, that's really, and that actually holds true not just for spinal cord injury, but for stroke and other types of neurodegenerative diseases where you lose a lot of neuronal tissue and you want to get new tissue to regrow. You need, it, you need those neurons to think they are in an embryo or in a child when they can grow. So, a lot of recovery from neurodegenerative, neurodegenerative diseases involves reactivating latent pathways that were present in the child. 
the pace at which research is uh, proceeding is expanding exponentially. You know, we're now in an era where uh, the idea of taking these molecular discoveries and translating them to real world applications now seems feasible, whereas back in the early 90s, the idea behind these sorts of research projects was to just gain more knowledge. Now it's to gain knowledge that we can apply to the treatment of diseases.